It's time to dive into another indie horror gem. In this video, we'll be exploring the story behind cozy game pals game, Fear the Spotlight. Developers describe this as a mix between the zany, goofy, kid-friendly horror of Goosebumps and the more survival horror aspects of Silent Hill. That being said, I had a good time playing this game, the puzzles were pretty easy, and it wasn't too scary either, which may be ideal for some of you out there. Please note that before we begin, this is a fairly new game having come out earlier this month, so there will be spoilers in this video, but let's dive in. Sunnyside High School students and best friends Vivian and Amy have broken into their school for a late night seance. Amy is interested in the occult and is curious about a fire that happened at the school back in 1991. The school itself, given that it's spooky season, are showcasing a collection on occult history in the library. After avoiding some cameras, they gain entry into the library. Vivian, a loner and considered to be a bookworm, is a volunteer in the school's library so she gains access to the office and grabs the key to a cabinet containing a spirit board. Amy, a goth and considered to be someone who posts satanic stuff on her socials, goes to find a spot where they can carry out their seance. Vivian sets the spirit board down, they light the candles. Amy sets down a burnt rose, thinking that it has something to do with the school fire, and they begin. At first nothing seems to happen, but then a spirit answers. Amy mentions that she's heard something following her in the halls. The spirit identifies themselves as a vengeful spirit. The planchette goes haywire and a flash of lightning reveals a creepy person standing behind Amy and the candles go out. Relighting the candles, Amy is gone, so Vivian tries to go and find her. The library looks like it's been ransacked and the bookcases have fallen over. A memorial for some deceased students that lost their lives in the 1991 fire has now changed and their portraits now seem ghostly. Walking through the pitch black darkness with only a lit candle to guide her way, Vivian walks down a strange corridor and sees Amy. Vivian calls out to her and she turns around, but she is grabbed by a bright light and pulled through a doorway. The place now appears to be on fire and the fire is spreading. The library is falling apart and Vivian escapes through a crack in the wall. Vivian comes to a long hallway in another part of the school. She finds a note on the ground and is shocked to discover that the note is dated 1991. She finds a strange door, but through the window next to the door she spots a payphone. She can use it to call someone. She walks around the corner and sees someone or something staring at her. Then she discovers a poster on the wall advertising tryouts for a school production of The Phantom of the Opera. Inside the school's locker room, Vivian encounters a monster known as Spotlight Head. He's searching for Vivian, so she has to sneak around, not making a sound, and after a tense encounter, she makes it to safety. Vivian manages to acquire various tools to help her, a screwdriver and some pliers, and finding a strange metal rose, Vivian uses it to gain access to the strange door and uses the payphone. She tries to call Amy, but Amy seems different. She says that she's safe. And when Vivian tells her what's going on and where she is, Amy says that she has just finished getting ready and tells Vivian to go to the theatre in the Weber building to see her in the big show. Vivian then heads out of the building and into the courtyard. She can see the Weber building, but it's on fire. Vivian needs to use an HVAC, an air conditioning unit, to clear the smoke out of the building's entrance, but the HVAC has no power, so Vivian enters the school's gymnasium to find the power controls. Inside the gymnasium, an event had been held to highlight the problem that is bullying. Throughout her time in the gym, Vivian finds a flashlight, encounters more strange ghostly apparitions, and once again comes across Spotlight Head. However, she manages to evade the monster once again and she finds the power box. It needs fuses, so Vivian tracks the fuses down and gets the power working again, restoring the power to the HVAC and thus clearing the smoke out of the Weber building's entrance. She enters the building. Vivian hits yet another snag, and it seems that the entrance to the actual theatre is blocked off by fire. The saving grace, however, is that there is a sprinkler system that Vivian can use to put the fire out. She's just got to find it. Underneath the Weber building is an old tunnel which students used to use, they weren't allowed, so a member of the teaching staff named Mr Crane had the cover to the tunnel changed. It's now some sort of ornate lock, but it doesn't take Vivian long to crack it and she enters the tunnel. There's not much down in the creepy tunnel except a strange wardrobe. Inside the closet is a statue, which is missing a face. An inscription inside states, Fire of my heart, never shall we part. Exploring the classrooms, Vivian, whilst avoiding Spotlight Head once again, manages to solve a few puzzles and she finds three pieces of a face belonging to the statue down in the tunnel. Placing the three pieces onto the statue, another tunnel is revealed behind the wardrobe. Down this tunnel, a room. It seems that someone has been living here. What's more is that there are cameras set up. 
Some of them are placed in and look into the dressing room in the girls' locker room. Whoever this sick individual is has also been tracking someone's movements. Further into the tunnel, a dressing room, and in addition to the dressing room, there is a prison cell. Using the pump system, Vivian uses it to provide water to the sprinklers and puts out the fire at the entrance of the theatre. Inside, and much to her surprise, Vivian sees a poster of Amy. It seems that she is the star of the show. Vivian enters the theatre. On the stage, past the electrified puzzles, she spots Amy inside a cage suspended above the stage. Making her way through the hazards, Vivian unties the ropes and the cage crashes to the stage. Amy seems to have no idea as to what is going on and seems very confused. She mentions everything going blurry and then dreaming about a monster that locked her up in the cage. The spotlight head shows up right on time and tells Vivian that he's not going to let her take Amy away from him. Amy tells Vivian that it was Spotlight Head that put her in there. Vivian then fights Spotlight Head. She uses the various tools picked up on her journey through the school and defeats the monster. The monster fades away, as does Amy's cage. Unfortunately, the entire school seems to be crumbling away, so Vivian and Amy have to make a run for it, and they manage to escape. They both wake up in the library at the table they were sat at for their seance. Amy doesn't know exactly what happened, but she thanks Vivian for going to the effort to save her. Vivian takes this opportunity to tell Amy something. See, she had written Amy a letter, but during her journey through the school, a phone call which seemed to be from Amy ridiculed Vivian for not having the guts to tell her to her face. See, Vivian likes Amy, romantically, and the feelings are reciprocated. The two of them get up and leave. Vivian goes to the office and looks in the bottom drawer of the filing cabinet. Then, a teacher enters and tells Vivian that she shouldn't be in there, and the game then ends. Okay, so in the game, Vivian comes across a lot of notes between students and diaries written by a student named Chrissy. It all started when Chrissy Castro, the quiet girl in the school, had ambitions to audition for the lead role in the school production of Phantom of the Opera. The problem with that plan came in the form of another girl at the school called Heather Moore. Heather's father was Superintendent Moore. He oversaw every school in the district and had a lot of say in which schools get particular funding. His daughter being at Sunnyside High School meant that Heather always got what she wanted. Chrissy would practice for the audition, sometimes in front of Heather, which enraged not only Heather, but her friends as well. So, Chrissy was bullied by Heather and her friends. An incident report was written up after a bullying incident, but given the school's fear of Heather's father, they buried the report. Nonetheless, Chrissy continued to practice. Chrissy's motivations for getting the lead role were that of love. She had feelings for a guy at school, the popular guy at school, a boy called Raoul. Raoul had gotten the part of the male lead and this was Chrissy's chance. But, Heather being Heather, with her father's connections, the drama teacher Mr Crane was pressurised into giving Heather the lead role, even though Mr Crane wanted to give Chrissy the role. As a result, Chrissy was resigned to being Heather's understudy. Chrissy thought her chances with Raoul were ruined. It was around this time that Chrissy started to receive strange letters, a special kind of paper in a red envelope accompanied by a red rose. One such letter told her that it's her time to shine. Then, an accident happened at the school swimming pool. Heather claimed to have slipped on a slimy substance and broke her leg. Naturally, this meant Heather couldn't rehearse or perform, so Chrissy took over as the female lead, and she was delighted. Mr Crane gave Chrissy extra tuition after school in order to get her ready for the part. In his eyes, she was perfect for the role. One day, Chrissy was attacked by Heather's friends, and Raoul stepped in to defend Chrissy. What's more, Raoul turned out to be interested in Chrissy as well. Then, to Chrissy's delight, Raoul asked her to be his girlfriend. To celebrate, they went out and bought promise necklaces, a heart, one half belonging to each of them. Then, Chrissy would receive another mysterious letter from her secret admirer. It seems that they don't approve of Chrissy's new relationship with her co-star. The letter says that Raoul will only hold her back. Chrissy then showed the letters to Raoul. In the meantime, practice for the production intensified. The music department were making the students practice fervently, to the point where the pianist's fingers were bleeding. It was around this time that Raoul went missing. Chrissy was distraught. She told Mr Crane that she quit, as without Raoul there was no point. The students were scared they'd be in danger, as were the school, so they ordered all the students straight home after school unless they had after school activities. Remember I mentioned that Chrissy told Mr Crane that she wanted to quit? Well, he wouldn't let her. He told her that it was her time to shine. Chrissy then realised that what he said was eerily similar to what was written in the mysterious letters. She figured that Mr. Crane must have had something to do with the disappearance of Raoul, so she investigated. In her dressing room, Chrissy found yet another mysterious letter, saying, This is our night, and that all the pain will have been worth it. Chrissy found Mr. Crane's backpack and inside, photos of herself. 
She realised there must have been cameras set up somewhere and upon investigating further, she discovered the prison cell where Raoul was being kept. He wasn't there. Well, he was. Mr. Crane had killed Raoul and burned his body and all that was left was the pipe that Crane used to kill Raoul, along with his half of the necklace. As the show was about to start and the audience was awaiting the performance, Chrissy ran onto the stage screaming for help and all of a sudden the prop chandelier fell onto her and crushed her. As a result of the incident, a fire broke out and it spread quickly. The mystery was, who untied the ropes that were holding the chandelier? But since many students died in the fire, there were no witnesses. But I think we know who did it. Mr. Crane. To cover his tracks, it's obvious at this point to determine that Mr. Crane died in the fire. Four years later in 1995, a note from Superintendent Moore revealed that Sunnyside High was struggling with admission numbers after the fire. As a result, the school was running out of funds and many teachers were fired. Years later in 2007, when demolishing the arts hallways, videotapes were found under the floorboards of the drama classroom, along with strange furniture in the sewer tunnels. Superintendent Moore wrote to the school principal. He speaks of something not being able to get out, otherwise it will lead to a lack of funding. The principal was ordered to destroy everything and to get rid of all photo evidence. So the school was renovated and then in 2012 renovations were completed and the school was thriving again. However, the spirits of the school's students remain there. Then the game takes place and the two girls were dragged into another world by the evil spirit of Mr. Crane, with the burnt rose being a conduit for that. He pulled them into a nightmarish world. He's pulling young girls into his twisted world in order to cast them as the lead role in his production. And this is why there are posters of Amy. She mentioned that she suspected something following her around the school, and it was the spirit of Mr. Crane. He targeted her. Now this game bore many similarities to the story of the actual Phantom of the Opera, even the names. The main character was a Swedish soprano named Christine, and in the opera, Christine falls in love with Vicomte Raoul de Chagny. And finally, the Phantom. The Phantom, called Eric, tutored Christine and was obsessed and infatuated with Christine. Similarities are there, and confirms that Mr. Crane, who, remember, was tutoring Chrissy after school, was the evil person who kidnapped and killed Raoul. And that's it for this video on the short indie horror game called Fear the Spotlight. If you want to play it for yourself, then I'll link the game down below. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe. And for now, take care, and I will see you in the next one.